the most anticipated board games coming out in 2023. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here at Tantrum Mouse Studio D. I'm Kevin Delt. Today we're talking about my most anticipated board games coming in 2023. Now, we, Melissa and I just did a video about our favorite Kickstarters, our favorite crowdfunding campaigns from 2022, and a lot of those games will be published in 2023. I mean, you have games like Last Light, Tesseract, you have the Renovation, the castles, renovations, the Maglev Metro expansions, Earth, Rolling Heights, Draft and Write Records. There's so many of these games that we like, Skyrise. Uh, boy, so many fun, fun games. And we just did a video on those. And I felt like, oh, a lot of those games would be in my most anticipated list because they were our favorite games that we played in prototype form last year. But I felt like, why just rehash, why rehash the list? Why don't I think find new games that will be published in 2023 that I've never mentioned before. So I believe most of these games, not all, but I think most of the games that are on this list will be published without any crowdfunding campaigns. I could be wrong on some of them, or I might not know about some of them. And I will say one that I haven't seen since 2021 is Agamonia, and hopefully that will come up. So definitely an honorable mention for that as well. Well, let's get started on today's video. Number 10. This already might be cheating, but in multiple ways, because this number has three different games in it, all from the same company, Queen Games, and I believe Queen Games does do some crowdfunding, so some of these might be crowdfunded, might have already been crowdfunded, might be crowdfunding. Anyway, I have never covered these on the channel, and I wanted to. So, I'm a big fan of Alhambra, and there is a new reimplementation of Alhambra called the Red Palace. And this is bringing uh, 3D wooden buildings um, and walls that are now separated, and it sounds really cool. I would love to play the Red Palace from Queen Games. Two others that are reimplementations of older games uh, we have Kuzco, which re implements Bora Bora, and also Vienna which re-implements La Isla. I think if I had to choose just one out of all those three, I would choose Cusco because the title or the description says, uh, make the dice do magic things in Cusco. That sounds cool. I like um, manipulating dice in games, dice as worker placements, worker placement type games. It sounds like this has some of that mechanics in it. Number nine. Well, last year, uh, we had a game called Lacrimosa. It was one of my favorite games that I played and and had a classical music theme. Well, there's another game coming out from a different company, Eggerspiel, called Stradivari. Now, if you're not familiar with that, you might, re might be familiar with Stradivarius, a uh, type of violin, and this sounds interesting. I like theme. Uh, violins are always cool. And the gameplay sounds pretty interesting too. So you're actually a member of the Stradivari family in the game, and you're grabbing materials to craft musical instruments to score points. Players are going to gather these materials by placing their workers on a game board, and during the course of the game, players can upgrade their workers to make them gather even more materials. So worker placement and upgrading your workers uh, with this theme sounds awesome. Number eight. I love a good abstract game, and Gigamic has made some popular ones, a subsidiary of Hachette, uh, like Quarto, a pretty popular one uh, this past year. There's a new one in the Q line, <laughs> Kowali, I think is how you say it. If not, I'm probably butchering that name, but it's for two players only. You're trying to get four stones in a row. You start with eight wooden stones and you're placing them on this board in an abstract way and I'm interested in playing that. So number seven. I have Hickory Dickory on my list from Plaid Hat Games. This is a worker placement type game where you're controlling a team of mice competing in a royal scavenger hunt. You're actually going to have the mice ride on the hands of the minute hand of the cuckoo clock which sounds really cool. You're trying to get victory points, and whoever has the most wins. 
Cloud Hat usually does a great job in the designs of their games, but also in their table presence, and Hickory Dickory looks like it will have some fun table presence. Number 6. We have Horticulture from Last Night Games. This says it plays 1 to 10 players and takes about 20 minutes to play. So lots of players, shorter play time. Seems like you could get it to the table more often or even in a given hour you could play it multiple times. That sounds cool. This is where you're planning your own garden and scoring points for planting according to your plan. So it looks like you're going to be drawing in the game. Uh, I like the theme. Uh, so doodling plus the planting theme uh, sounds like a fun little game. I uh, look forward to playing horticulture. Number five. We have Panchayat from Kyo Games that plays in about 25 to 45 minutes and it's for one to four players. This is a tile placement game where you're trying to build the best village in India. The game lasts eight rounds and it seems like you're choosing between two different tiles to place in your village. And it sounds like there's this other little mechanic where you can hide the other tile or maybe sometimes you can do that. So adding a little twist to a tile lane game sounds interesting to me. I enjoy tile lane games, so I'm excited to try this one. Number four, we have Gondoliri. This is for two to five players, takes about 30 minutes to play. Uh, the theme sounds interesting to me. Actually, the other Gondolier game that uh, I own is Murano from Inca and Marcus Brand. Uh, this, I don't even know if it's in print anymore, but I enjoy this Gondolier game, and I don't know of that many games with this theme. So when I saw the name of this game, Gondolieri, it sounded interesting. You are in control of a few different gondoliers and you're rolling dice and deciding which ones you want to advance and there seems to be uh, a bridge where there could be a traffic jam to try to get uh, different gondoliers uh, through the bridge first. <clears throat> so that kind of sounds fun and yeah, uh, interested in trying gondoliery from Hutch. Number three, we have The White Castle from Devere. This plays one to four players, takes about 70 to 90 minutes to play. You're trying to become the most influential clan in Japan. This is a Euro style game with things like resource management, worker placement, dice placement, carrying out different types of actions. This is from the same team that designed Red Cathedral. And um, Melissa and I love playing Red Cathedral, but The White Castle sounds really cool. Um, looking forward to playing this one. Uh, Devere usually does really good on their production, so I'm excited to see this one. Number two. Here we have Rahua. Rauha. R-A-U-H-A. I'm not really sure how to say it, but this is coming from G-R-R-E Games and uh, Division of Hachette. Looking forward to this. It looks cool. It looks like the game is divided into two different ages. You have age one where you're sort of prepping and planning and things like that. And then age two, you're sort of activating uh, the different things, which will gain you crystals and points. And it plays in four rounds. It seems like there's some pattern building going on in the game. And I really enjoy that mechanic in board games. So I'm not going to say the game again, but I'm interested in trying this one. Number one. And one of my most anticipated games coming out in 2023 is Books of Time from Board and Dice. This game is for one to four players, takes about 45 minutes to 60 minutes to play. This has a unique twist on tableau building. You're gonna be adding different pages to three different books in your tableau. Uh, the kinds of pages are trade, science, and industry. It sounds like there's going to be some special abilities that you can activate in the game. And I love tableau building games. And this sounds really interesting with having like, you're actually constructing books with like book binders. So some cool components, uh, a great company that puts out good games and a unique twist on tableau building. So sign me up. Well, those are my top 10. I do have a few runner ups. So let's get into those. I have three runner-ups. First one is Being Mr. Bean. I uh, love a good party game, and this sounds like it's going to be fun from Vesuvius Media. This plays three to six players, 45 to 60 minutes, and is based off of Mr. Bean, who is very uh, comedic actor, so I'm excited to try this one. Gigamic is bringing a game called Food Truck. I think I'm just interested in trying it because of the theme. This is for two to five players. It takes about 20 minutes to play. 
Looks like you're prepping the food, you're serving the people, and there's like this end of service cleanup round. So sounds like you're actually running a food truck. Sounds fun. And the last one is from Gray Fox Games called Bazaars of Ubar. This is for two to four players, takes about 45 to 75 minutes to play. This looks like a tile drafting game with some engine building going on. So those mechanics sound really fun. It looks like a fun theme. So Bazaars of Ubar from Gray Fox. Now those were my top 10 plus a few more. I would love to know which games you're excited about coming this year, 2023. They could be games that you, uh, backed on Kickstarter, or maybe uh, you just know about them because of uh, some social media or things like that, just let me know in the comments what games you're excited about. Maybe there are games I mentioned on my list. I'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let's spread the love of board gaming.